important and it is valuable. So anybody who keeps their, their valuables close to their person, in that pocket or whatever, check it. If it's not there, please come and see me. Okay, okay. Uh, still the action continues out on course, and right now we've got a man called Chris Bowler. Now Chris Bowler is the most sport director of Ultra Four Europe, and he's usually more used to setting up courses, but he also races in hill rallies and in cup safari as well. This is a vehicle that he built at his own business, Cambrian Farms. They're a Land Rover specialist, and this vehicle here has a GM LX3 6.2, 550 horsepower, mated to a six tail AT. So we've got a young lad, Stuart. You need to check your pocket tape. Right? Young lad called Stuart, check your pocket tape. Come see me. So Chris making his way up the hill there. Now there's not many forms of off-road motorsport that Chris Bowler hasn't been involved in in the past. Thoroughly nice chap. He's got a chance, pop down to the pits, have a chat to him. Then the younger regale you with stories. Who's only recently out in France, building the course for the Ultra 4 King of France, which is a huge success. Just took it pieces, put it back together again. It took him quite a few years, but that was his entry into engineering and mechanics. And it's really to you name it, he could drive it and probably fix it. Well, so many of us started with Land Rover. And somebody's building a house around it, and they said we want to get rid of that junk in the middle. First car. <laughs> it was lovely. I had to haul it out of the wall, so it was off road straight away. It was wonderful. Okay, so the cars we've been watching out of track recently have been what we call IFS cars. That means they have independent front suspension, but not this car. This car is solid axle front, solid axle rear. That means that you have to do, use a slightly thing to do, is it's going to come out here and have a bundle of fun. Now, if you watch those wheels, you'll see those front wheels are shaking as he's under the power. That's because the axles he's using are not a motorsport axle, they are literally a... Chris Bowler, uh, the experience you have with events like Goodwood, with Ultra 4, across and around the world is absolutely phenomenal. But this year, Goodwood is bringing something a little bit special. This is a real buzz, a real atmosphere. 40 cars in the Britpart Off-Road Arena. It's massive. What were your thoughts coming up here today? 40 cars in the Britpart Off-Road Arena is going to be quite something else. There's such a selection of vehicles. Admittedly, there's not as many of the of the Ultra 4 cars, but there's such a cross-section. There's new drivers coming in with new machines. You know, it's going to be breathtaking. And the action is going to be constant because with that number of vehicles, you've got the ability to, to, to keep the show going. And I know certainly Goodwood and certainly Paul Myers at Britpart wanting to keep that pressure on and make the, make the event a proper spectacle. Yeah, exactly. Now, as I say, you've got experience right across the board. In military training, you can drive anything from a, from a, a bike to a fully-fledged tank. I mean, you just drive everything everywhere, can't you? New course for this year. Uh, it's thrown a little bit of a curveball in there. And what, what were your thoughts on it? Have you seen it yet? I've seen the video yeah. of the, of oh, the course. I haven't actually been over to have a look at it. I yeah. understand there's a new technical area. Absolutely. The, uh, a couple of the jumps have been rescheduled or re, re, re-sculptured. Um, the course itself, I believe, is fundamentally the similar sort of two loops, one yes. inside the other. The technical area, I think, to be fair, is going to be quite quite something to watch. It will oh, give exactly. the, the spectators the opportunity to appreciate just what these cars can do. Mm. Because for a lot of spectators, they see a brightly coloured, stickered, shiny car zipping past. Yeah. You could say, well, just put it on tarmac, it'll be just as impressive. But when you then put an off-road vehicle through its paces in some undulating ground, some technical, having to turn, having to go over, you then get to see the wheels moving up and down. And then you appreciate, hang on a minute, this isn't just a race car. This is a very, very competent race car that's designed to do across the flat, across the rough. So I think the course will really bring out the best of all of the cars. And that's exactly, I mean, this year it is innovators, masters, uh, masterminds of motorsport. And that is what off-road does so well. Some of these cars, the innovation, design, technology that's gone into them is just yeah. phenomenal. And for you yourself, you know, fully fledged engineer, you, you build, you, you sort of do your own cars, don't you? You have done since you were 13, got your first Land Rover. Yeah, yeah something like that. And then, then it took you, I don't know, 12, 13 years to actually uh, fully refurb that. But that gave you such a grounding in engineering. Yeah. Yeah. So for you to actually be able to show these cars off exactly what they do it's really important because it does it is a major significant difference isn't it well the thing is when you when you build and design a vehicle and and again you're relying on a lot of components from other people fox yeah. shocks king shocks whatever yeah. components engines tires wheels all those kind of components you're bringing together on your recipe and 
some people get it right, some people get it wrong. But at the end of the day, you've chosen those components correctly for what you want the car to do. You then want to be able to demonstrate it. Well, normally we'd go to an off-road event, we'd compete with our fellow competitors, but to come to something like Goodwood, where you've got almost like the perfect storm of a course, you've got the ability to run it multiple times, you've got the ability to go, oh, maybe I should have tweaked this and tweaked that, but you can, you can almost refine how you drive your car on a totally repeatable course, very much similar to how you test a military vehicle to be fair because it's all about repeatability if you test a vehicle and something breaks you go back to the manufacturer or the design and say well where did that happen you go oh, well it, it happened out there somewhere but if you can show that it happened on a 30 degree slope a rebound, always coming yeah. off at a certain point and that's where that happened you've then got the ability to analyze why it went wrong and not necessarily blame the terrain but realize that maybe the terrain you're asking the vehicle to go over is more excessive or less excessive. Maybe it's all about the mobility. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're bringing the uh, the Land of the Ultra 107. Yes. Uh, this time you've got it. I mean, you've got it to stay got, full I've of got, vehicles. Really, haven't you? Three vehicles. In, yeah. Three vehicles in total. Yeah. And you've just been out. You've done the um, the recent hill rally put on by Neil Rogers, which is just you know John Aston. What an amazing yeah, event. Uh, definitely. Including road liaison as well as off road stuff as well. So you know these cars. We talk about the um, acute terrain alteration which these cars have to go through, and that kind of says it all. Doesn't yeah. it? And, and it, it's like taking a war horse, but drive, you have to have precision driving to get the very best out yeah. of them, don't you? No, very much so. I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate in some ways that I do have three cars that I can sort of <laughs> chop and change. Sadly, <laughs> I've only got one set of seats and a couple of sets of harnesses, so we have to sort of beg and borrow from one to the other. But they are three completely different vehicles. One's a road-going Disco 2, road legal, uh, literally £250 off eBay, put a roll cage in it make it look like one of my vehicles and the hill rally was its first competitive outing and it, it, it was a double-edged uh, event for us it was an opportunity to spend some time with my son who I don't see very often yeah. he's my co-driver and it was an opportunity to do an event which to be perfectly honest I find the absolute pinnacle of off-road driving because you've, you've got navigation you've got road reliability you've got stage rallying all those kind of things which when you throw them all together the Kerry stage I put a put a video of it on my Facebook page the Kerry stage was just fantastic and I find myself racing in a hill rally and I spend more time looking at the at the views outside than I do concentrate on the road <laughs> I just enjoy it. the whole concept of it but that's the key thing with you is you are absolutely an all-round across the board you, you design courses internationally too you do everything and that brings us to recent developments ultra 4 Europe which has come across obviously from the States yes uh, with a massive mighty ultra 4 over there King of the Hammers all that uh, you've bought uh, you, you sort of come on board with Drew right now and you're taking it forward um, from from here yes um, into the future and the future is looking massive well, this is our really tenth. Exciting. This is our tenth year in Europe for mm. for Ultra Four Europe. Obviously, um, King of the Valleys, 2012 was the Stop, first event yeah. that Neil Whitford All Wheel Drive Club, uh, a, a, as a collaboration, produced. And this year at King of Britain, we're wanting to sort of pay homage to those early days of King of the Valleys. And to be fair, Ultra Four coming to Europe really did change a lot of people's aspirations yes. and capabilities in the way that we did off-road racing yeah. and whilst comp safari and hill rally is still very much alive and, and very much at the forefront yeah. when you're combining trialing with comp safari in one event with some fairly unlimited rules yeah. in how you can go about doing it obviously safety rules are very important but the formats and so on mm. Um, it's created a completely different approach to that kind of off-road racing. So this year being the 10th anniversary, we've just come off the back of King of France, which was a great success at a venue we've been to before. We were very fortunate in the fact that they'd had a lot of changes to the course. The course itself, I was really glad to see, had cut up quite nastily, so that towards <laughs> the end of it, it produced a course where for the, one of the very first times we had the lead cars having to winch, having to think. It Fantastic. wasn't just a question of I've got big wheels and big horsepower. Yeah, we had the through. two lead yeah. cars actually fighting on their last lap, winching side by side. That's and for an Ultra 4 event, that's the pinnacle. You know, if you can, if you can create the environment that's just about passable in a racing environment, rather than just oh, I was faster than him, then I think we did well. We're going shortly into King of Britain at yeah. the end of July. Up at Walters Arena. That's at yeah. Walters Arena. Um, the course is now done. We're looking at about a 13 mile course. Um, 
We then moved swiftly on to the beginning of September for King of Poland. I haven't quite started the course on that, but we're certainly very much in consultation with the owner out there. And then the last two events of the year, we are welcoming back King of Portugal, which has not been in our calendar for about four years now. Um, and then finally, the Battle of Bovington down at the military training area in Bovington. So oh, home we've got a great, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's one of my favorite places to race. Sadly, one I won't get oldest, to race. One of the oldest absolutely. off road sites as well. Yeah. I mean, years ago, the heavy vehicle, it's been used no. for years. I agree. By, 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 I it's agree. A beautiful site. So coming back to Good for Goodwood, we've got, as I say, one of the best arenas, one of the best um, crews, 40, 40 vehicles uh, heading up there. Um, what for you is the highlight of? Goodwood, which bit is your favourite bit, or is it uh, an amalgamation? It, it, to be fair, it's an amalgamation of a lot of things. The privilege to bring your own car yeah. to such a such a place yeah. with all the history that Goodwood has, to be, I use the word competing, but competing is not the right word, to be taking part with all of the other drivers, super, super high class drivers here, to be privileged to be part of that gang is, is something special. To race the car I've brought, which to be fair is in its twilight years, I have some plans for a new car. Oh, well, I, I'll be. I'll, <laughs> I, I, it's, there we go. It's, it is. It is on the on the on the sort of the plans. Um, and I'm not saying that we won't see the, the Ultra 107 again, but it might be a slightly different car next year. Um, no, and also to see people, to see people genuinely interested in what we're doing. I, I, I find it fascinating that you can park a vehicle in a group of spectators, you know, walk away from it and people start taking pictures. And they're not taking pictures because your car's better than everybody else's. They're taking pictures because they're looking at something which they like to see. And they're just uh, interested in uh, it. Absolutely. And interested in it. To, to yeah. open the door and say to a young lad who's looking at it, so do you want to sit in? Do you want to put the harness on? Get your dad to take a picture? That part of Goodwood doesn't exist anywhere else. At a competition, we're all very much tied by the safety rules and whether you've signed on or not. Whereas here at Goodwood, once you're out of the arena and in the yeah. garage area, if somebody wants to come and have a chat about your car, that's what it's all about. So, Chris Fowler for 2022, wishing you the very best for Goodwood Festival of Speed, and thank you for coming to have a chat. Thank you very much indeed, Diana. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely has everything. Got the full And it's all right for test space, but you can get used to the power. Uh, it's uh, 500 or 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 500 but it's in a standard state of tune, exactly. it's as it came out of the Camaro. But it's frightening enough for him to just that, because he didn't dare do anything to it. <laughs> in fact, right. if you keep the drivers in the in setting of sorry cars, once you get much over 400 dollars now, Well, the cars are much physically bigger in America. They run approximately around two tons, two and a quarter tons, um, whereas our cars are running between one and one and a quarter tons, generally speaking. Um, and uh, if you try and put too much power through the smaller cars, um, you uh, will 
will end up exploding them if you hit a hole hard on full power, typically. Um, but if you're running slightly less power, it's more likely to be uh, kinder on the transmissions. Well, Chris is running very nicely, not taking any risks at all, because that good professor of speech you take, uh, that we have up here at the Brickfast Off-Road Arena is pretty darn magnificent. They all live part of it. But when the moment, the moment you take that spot drive, it's so special, it's such an honour. Every single driver here has just got that glimmer of hope. So they're going out there to do their final testing, final checking, final shakedown, and just polishing those lines in the hope that just, just possibility they just want to that title and believe me, 40 cars in a serious competition for every single one of them.